Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are at West Lafayette High School, home of the Red Devils. We welcome you to today's education-based high school varsity baseball game. This evening, it's going to be the Lafayette Central Catholic Knights. The traveling, they are at the West Lafayette Red Devils. This internet radio broadcast is made possible by audiosportsonline.net. That's ASO. That's Robbie Kendall providing internet radio access for PutMeInSports.com since 2008. We do thank you for tuning in. We'll mention this game slated to start at 5.30. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about each school, but first we'll talk about uh, games happening. Games happening in the Hoosier Conference. Hoosier Conference baseball tonight, game night, East Division, West Division. This is who's playing who and where are they playing. We'll mention the only team that's not playing out of conference right today and tomorrow. Actually, it's, it's actually um, today and Friday has been central. We'll talk about that in a moment. We'll mention in the East Division, matching up today and tomorrow is Western Panthers and the Northwestern Tigers. So that's a, that's a April 16th, April 17th. Contest. We'll mention that's a conference team in the East Division. We'll mention tonight they're at Northwestern High School. We're going to play on the synthetic field turf. Tomorrow night they'll be at Western. They'll play on grass. And then we'll mention both those games will start at 6 o'clock. And we'll mention also in the East Division um, today on the 16th and tomorrow the 17th, Hamilton Heights Huskies linking up with the Tipton Blue Devils. So um, Huskyville, that'll be at Hamilton Heights tonight, and it will happen at Tipton tomorrow night. In the West Division, West Division baseball games happening tonight and tomorrow. That's right here tonight, Lafayette Central Catholic Knights going against the West Lafayette Red Devils. Uh, both games, I should mention, tomorrow night they'll be at Central Catholic. Uh, both games slated to start at 5.30 p.m. And the final West Division ball game tonight and tomorrow night is Twin Lakes Indians and the Rensselaer Central Bombers. We'll mention tonight it's at Rensselaer Central, and that's a 5.30 start. Tomorrow night it will be at Twin Lakes, and that will be a 6 o'clock start. And as mentioned, West Division, that's the Benton Central Bison. Tonight they're playing a 5 o'clock game at Delphi, going against the Oracles tonight. And then they'll um, play Friday night. They'll come back on Friday, get a couple days off. That'll be April 19th. Benton Central will travel to Tri-County. That game at Tri-County will start at 5.30 on Friday. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about East School. We'll talk about the first, the home team. We'll talk about the West Lafayette Red Devils. Red Devils have a school enrollment of 754. They're Class 3A, sectional number 20. There are six in their sectional. You've heard this sectional before. It is Frankfurt, North Montgomery, Northwestern, Twin Lakes, West Lafayette, and Western. The principal at West Lafayette High School is Chad Rogers. Chad Rogers, brand new principal. I imagine he's doing a fine job. Um, he was voted in earlier this, this year. We'll mention the athletic director and assistant principal. He used to be the baseball coach. I remember him from a baseball coach's point of view. I do. I'm out. I work with him as an athletic director. That's Mr. Joel Strode. I saw Joel Strode at a Husky game. We was on our way out. That was right after J uh, James Shot and the West Lafayette Lady Red Devils defeated the Hamilton Heights Lady Huskies. I was walking out the door and I saw Joel. I said, Joel. I said, do you miss baseball? And he said, yes. 
You know he does, but he's the AD and the assistant principal. And we'll also mention the athletic secretary at West Lafayette High School is Kathy Slaughter. We'll mention West Lafayette High School is located at 1105 North Grant Street, West Lafayette, Indiana, 47906. You can reach them by telephone at 765 746 zero four zero zero on the web you can find them at west lafayette athletics dot com their colors they wear scarlet and gray they perform in the hoosier conference they are in the west division and i will mention the athletic trainers at west lafayette high school is gusta owens and Steffi anderson West Lafayette Red Devils currently one win, five losses on the young season. They're zero and two in the Hoosier West Division. Their head coach is Mr. Aaron Wood. And I will mention the next game on the agenda, as you know, going to happen tomorrow night. They're talking about a little bit of rain, but I think it's going to be late. They're talking about rain. We'll see. I doubt it. But it's going to be tomorrow night, Wednesday, the 17th. That'll be a six o'clock start at Central Catholic High School. And I will also mention after that ball game, on Thursday, April 18th, West Lafayette will travel not very far. They'll do battle with the Harrison Raiders. We'll talk a little bit about the Lafayette Central Catholic Knights. The Knights have school enrollment of 296. And we'll mention their Class 1A, Sectional 54. In their sectional six teams, it's going to happen at Lafayette Central Catholic High School. In that section will be Attica, Covington, Fountain Central, Central Catholic, North Vermilion, and Riverton Park. The principal at Central Catholic High School is Daryl Beck. The athletic director is Tim Bordenay. The assistant AD is Charlie Roberts. And the athletic trainer is Sarah Igo. Central Catholic High School is located at 2410. South 9th Street, Lafayette, Indiana, 47909. You can dial them up at 765-474-2496. On the web, it's lccathletics.com. They were the colors, blue and white. They are in the Hoosier Conference. As mentioned, that's an East Division and a West Division Conference. There are four teams this year in the East. And we'll mention from top to bottom, Western, they're 5-0. and They're 1-0 and in the East Division. Northwestern, they're 5-1. and 0-0 in the East Division. Those two teams going against each other. Two games set tonight and tomorrow. That might be good. As third place presently is Hamilton Heights. They're one in four. I got a first win for a brand new coach, Chad Hughes. Chad Hughes is the baseball coach. If you don't know Chad, he is a very kind gentleman. He's a big time Bears fan. Takes after his dad. And Tipton, Tipton zero and two, zero and one in the East. West Division is like this: seven and two Central Catholic. They're three and zero oh in the West Division. Second place, four and one Twin Lakes. They're two and one in the West. Benton Central. They're two and five in the West. They're two and two. I take that back. They're two and five overall. They're two and two in the West. West Lafayette Red Devils are one and five overall. They're zero and two in the West. And Bristol Air Central, they're zero and nine overall. They're zero and two in the West. Central Catholic, as mentioned, there's seven wins, two losses on the season. Three wins, zero losses in the West. Head coach is Tim Bordenay. He's a 1987 graduate from Central Catholic. And as you know, next game on the agenda for the Knights will be a home game tomorrow night. I believe it's, it's saying 530 on this, this piece of paper. It says 6 o'clock on my other ones. Check the listings. But they're going to play against West Lafayette in the second game of the two-game set tomorrow night at Central Catholic High School. They're going through the lineups right now. We're getting ready for the National Anthem here momentarily. And um, it's going to be West Lafayette Red Devils and the Lafayette Central Catholic Knights. Knights lining up on the third base foul line. They're going to take third base dugout in this ball game. West Lafayette occupying the first base dugout. 
Public address mentioning the starters as they go out to take their positions for West Lafayette. Well, I mentioned West Lafayette. Their lineup is going to consist of the pitcher Chase Taylor. You are number 24, Chase Taylor. Well, I'll let you know he's a senior class member. And then we'll talk about the lineup here momentarily. And then we'll go over the Red Devils lineup around the infield. And we'll mention that umpires are ready to go and wear the dark blue and the dark ash pants, dark gray pants. And then we're going to stand for the national anthem. And as mentioned, the pitcher is 24, Chase Taylor. So we're going to stand at attention for the national anthem. We'll set this down. a nice baseball park anthem sounded beautiful right here at West Lafayette High School. Um, we'll mention West Lafayette going to stay out in the field getting ready for first inning action. The first we'll mention West Lafayette Red Devils will start like this. As you know, the pitcher will be Chase Taylor. He'll run number 24. He's a senior. Chase Taylor has two appearances. This will be appearance number three. Chase Taylor, he has eight innings under his belt this season. He's allowed 10 hits. He has allowed 10 runs, seven. Just seven of those runs were earned. He has walked six. He has struck out three. Uh, he's uh, faced 42 batters, a total of 137 pitches. And he's faced 34 official at-bats. And um, he's given up eight stolen bases while he was on the pitcher. Forever. He's a lefty. Getting warmed up right now. We'll mention his catcher, battery partner, is number 14, Fisher Trotsky. At first base, number seven, Jack Shaper. At second base, number 16, Lincoln Burry. At shortstop, number nine, Joe Doty. At third base, number 10, Aiden Heap. In left field, number 19, Colin Castens. In center field, number two, Ben Wirtz. And in right field, number eight, Jacob Dwitch. So that's where they'll start up. We'll mention the, line, the Knights here are sent you to play first. First three batters for the Knights will be number nine, Hudson Gutwein. Number 10, Lucas Gerke. And number 20, Caden Minnick. We're finishing up some warm-up tosses there on the pitchers, Trevor. Right here, the pitcher Chase Taylor in today's ball game. And then well, the field looks marvelous. The, the infield grass, the outfield grass, plenty of chlorophyll looks great after the nice rain. I thought the dress reminded me the rain probably keeping it looking nice. And he's probably right. But I'll mention the dirt, the dirt infield, they got it manicured perfectly. It looks marvelous also. So I get ready to throw it around the diamond here probably momentarily. And uh, we're welcome now. Well, welcome to the jungle. Welcome to the jungle. You know Jim Rome uses that song as his intro. I don't listen to a lot of Jim Rome anymore. He used to listen a little bit. Got to hear a lot of takes. So first batter will step in. Lafayette Central Catholic. Going to be number nine, Hudson Gutwein. 
I said, dude, why play in this shortstop position in today's ball game? He's a middle infielder. Right-handed batter would step in. And the rubber would work from the stretch. It's Chase Taylor. Getting ready to take first pitch. We're right on time for the start of this ball game. Ball's live. Here we go. Working from the stretch. First pitch from Taylor. Inside edge. Strike call. 5.31 on the at and clock. Uh, we've seen this umpire before. I can tell by his strike signal. Out of the set, here comes the pitch. Back to a curveball in there for a strike. Kemp goes 0-2. Bring it back to a curveball by Chase Taylor. Bearing in looking at signals. Out of a set position. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. Inside a ball. Bring a fastball, got some good velocity off of that left arm of Chase Taylor. Stepping back in. His goot wine. Peering in, looking at signals. Taylor. Here comes the one-two pitch. Swung on ground ball. Third base gonna get by. He sprawled out, laid out for it. Couldn't get a glove on it. Nice effort, third base by Aiden Heap. It's gonna be a base hit off the bat of Hudson Gutwine. He's at first base. So stepping in, looking at signals, is Lucas Gerke. Lucas Gerke taking some signals in from Coach Bordney, stepping in now. Gerke wears number 10, he plays first base. He got a promotion, he's batting in the second spot from the second game. We're going from the set, here comes a pickoff move at first base. No tag applied by Jack Schaefer. Back safely is Gert, is Gutwine. Stepping back in, peering in, looking at signals. Here's Taylor, out of the set. First pitch to Gerke. Could be a ground ball, could be a fair ball, and could be right side of the pit. The glove of first base can go into right field on the ground. High hop, hard ball to handle by the first baseman, Jack Schaefer. It's going to be a double, excuse me, a, a single, and two guys on already for the night. Nobody out. Stepping in, it's going to be Cade Minnick. Cade Minnick going to step in. Left-handed batter's box. Two aboard. Hudson Gutwine at second base. Lucas Kirky at first base. Three hitter in the lineup for the Knights. We're at the top of the first inning. Out of set, check second base. Here's the pitch from Taylor. So it goes behind that. Minnick in the batter's box. It's caught right there by catcher. Fisher Trotsky. No harm done. One ball, no strikes. So check and say their third base. Hand clap steps back in. Caden Minnick, left-handed batter. Senior athlete. Check second a couple of times. Here's the pitch. Outer half. Strike call. Count goes even at one and one. One ball, one strike. Caden Minnick batting. Top of the fifth inning. Two aboard for the Knights. First and second base. Here comes the pitch from Chase Taylor. Inside tight for a ball. Count goes two and one. Caden Minnick checking signals. Signals given by Coach Borden. And he'll step back in. Two balls, one strike. Peering in looking at signals. Chase Taylor. Just out of a set, he'll check second base. Here's the pitch. Outside a ball. Count goes three and one. Three balls, one strike. Cade Minnick on the season has four walks, four base on balls. And he steps back in. Peering in looking at signals. Now out of a set, Taylor. Here's the pitch. Swung on to take one to center field. Could be right at him. He'll move to his right. He'll make the catch. He's going to show off that arm. He's got a good one. Center fielder. Usually center fielder and shortstop. Pretty much the best athletes on the team. And uh, proven that theory right is Ben Worth in center field. So one out. Fly out to right center. Called by the center fielder for Kate Minnick. Runner still at first and second base for the night. Stepping into bat for Ben Robbins. Brent Robbins bats in the fourth spot for the Knights. Working from the stretch, now the set is worth. Check second base, here's the first pitch to Robbins. Ground ball, third base. 
Brunton steps on third, gets the out, tries to get the double play just behind Brent Robbins, making it safe to first base. And a nice play at third base by Aiden Heap. Aiden Heap records the second a second out in the half inning. And there are two outs here at the top of the first inning. Knights nice start out with two aboard, nobody out. Fly out by many to center field. And a fielder's choice right there at third base by Aiden Heap. Stepping in, Jackson Kane, he's a five-hitter in today's ball game. Out of the set, check second base a second time. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Right on time, Jackson Kane. Count goes 0-1. Two aboard for the Knights. Kane Minnick at second base, Brent Robbins at first base. Nobody holding them on. Out of the set, here comes the pitch. He'll take one to right field. Going to back him up a little bit. Jacob Deutsch going to fight that wind and make the catch. Wind is blowing across the diamond. Blowing across the diamond from left to right field. And it's blowing pretty substantial. And I'm making the catch there is Jacob Deutsch in right field. He had to move accordingly to the wind. So the Knights are put down. They'll go out and play defensively here in the bottom of the first inning. And I will mention the Knights on the diamond. They're going to start like this. Bren Robbins. Bren Robbins is going to start as the pitcher. He wears number 33. Bren Robbins on the season. Bren Robbins has 10 innings under his belt. Bren Robbins has two wins, no losses on the season. Uh, he started three games. He participated in three games, three appearances. This is number four for each. He has faced 46 batters. Uh, he has thrown a total of 170 pitches. He has given up 10 hits, 6 runs. Only 3 of those runs were earned. He has walked 3. He has struck out 12. And uh, 4 of those strikeouts went down looking. And I uh, will mention, he has left 10 on base. He's got an ERA of 2.100. The little Van Halen Running with the devil. That's probably the Red Devil's theme song. So getting warmed up there on the surface, Brent Robbins. And uh, we thank you for tuning in. And we'll mention this game is in part being brought to you by Lisa Stokes Bear, Century 21. When you're thinking about residential or corporate relocations, you know a perfect house can soon become a perfect home. And Lisa Stokes Bear would like nothing more than to utilize her 20 plus years of experience to help you begin that process. Yes, real estate reliability is something a professional real estate agent and or real estate broker strives for, such as Lisa Stokes Bear. Your happiness and her success are two of the same. For the real estate lady with the high real estate IQ, contact Lisa Stokes Bear by cellular phone or by text message 317-513-4086. Again, her number is 317-513-4086. Lisa Stokes Bear. Century 21, Sheets Company. That Sheets Company is just across 96th Street, just barely into Marion County. That's where their office is at, right across the street from Hamilton County. And they're going to get one more warm-up toss. Home plate umpire lets them know. And then Red Devils, about six of them out of the dugout. They all have helmets. That's mandatory. They're out there warming up right there, time in the picture. And time in Bren Robbins. Well, Bren Robbins is going to take the final warm-up toss. He's ready to go. And the first batter that's going to step in for the Red Devils is going to be the center fielder, number two, Ben Worth. Ben Worth, center fielder. He's going to step in, start up this offense for West Lafayette. Left-handed batter, Ben Worth. Ben Worth, a member of the sophomore class. A little bit of an open stance. Peering in, looking at singles. Looking over the glove. Wind up. Ben Robbins, first pitch. Outside a ball. Just missed. 
try to fight that corner right there. Home plate umpire. Call a good disciplined strike zone at the moment. Steps back in. Ben Worth. Here comes a windup from Bryn Robbins. The 1-0 pitch. Hit ground ball. Second first base. Going to get through. Lucas Gerke gave it a good look. He had to travel about four steps to his right. Goes into right field. Base hit as Caden Minnick throws it back in from right field. So second pitch, Ben Worth gets himself aboard. So first two batters for the Knights get aboard with a single ground ball through the infield. And Ben Worth doing just the same here in the bottom of the first inning. Stepping in, number 19, Colin Castens. He's playing left field in the ball game. Right-handed batter, working out a stretch, now the set pickoff move. First base tag applied. By Lucas Kirky back safely, head first is Ben Worth. So signals given. Coach Wood right there, that's Aaron Wood, third base coach. Working out a stretch, now the set is to pitch. Going to put a bunt down. Going to be fielded by Robbins, who will get the out at first base. But giving it a good run to first base was Colin Castens. Made that play close. His ideal situation was to move the runner, but he almost got safe. There's one out. He does move the runner. Ben Worth is at second base. We're going to see the three hitter, number seven, Jack Schaefer. Jack Schaefer, he plays first base for West Lafayette. He's going to step in, going to bat right handed. Right handed batter, one out. Bottom of the first inning, run report at second base is Ben Worth. Got himself aboard with a base hit. Leadoff batter. Here's the pitch. Swung on, ground ball. Third base, Gavin Butel. Hot shot. Going to bounce off of his uniform. I think it got him right there in the glove. Difficult. Going to throw to home plate. Going to score a run. Throw to second base. Is off target. Going to go into center field. Head first slide. We'll mention Jack Schaefer is going to get credit for a base hit and an RBI. And he slides into second base on the throw. And he's safe at second. So Shaper's at second base. One run in. There's one out here in the bottom of the first inning. Stepping into bat, the four hitter. Number 16, Lincoln Furry. Play second base for the Red Devils. Right handed batter. Out of the stretch, Ben Brent Robbins checks base. Here's the pitch. Pitch comes in. Strike called. Breaking pitch just at the top of the zone. Uh, wind blowing, you can see the pant legs fluttering right there, home plate, umpire. You can also see him flutter on the, the batter, Lincoln Furry. Pitch comes in, strike two. So no balls, two strikes, he'll step back in. Lincoln Furry, he is the second baseman, batting fourth for the Red Devils. Out of the set, Brent Robbins checks second base. Here comes the 0-2 pitch, short hop. Good block by Jackson Kane. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Making quick use of that batter's box. Right there is Lincoln Furry. Out of the set. Here comes the one-two pitch. Could go to second base. One hop. Gonna be fielded right there. By Mikey Stapleton. He'll throw to first base. Get the put out. But we'll mention number seven. Jack Schaefer will move from second to third base. And there are now two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. Stepping in is going to be the five hitter, number nine, Joe Doty. Joe Doty can step in. He plays shortstop for the Red Devils. And a right-handed batter out of the set, Brent Robbins. First pitch to Doty. Outside the ball. One ball, no strikes. Joe Doty, the five hitter for the Red Devils. One run in. Bottom in the first inning. Here comes a pitch from Robbins. Breaking pitch right across the dish. Count goes one and one. One ball, one strike. Right handed batter, five hitter, number nine, Joe Doty. Out of the set. Here comes a pitch from Robbins. You're going to take one to the left field. You just stroke it in there down the left field line, going to get an RBI. So just a soft hit to the outfield down the left field line, and Joe Doty gets himself aboard with a base hit and an RBI. So two runs in here in the bottom 
of the first inning. Next batter going to step in. It's going to be their sixth hitter, number 10, Aiden Heap. Aiden Heap, third baseman, another right-handed batter. Runner aboard at first base is Joe Doty. Here comes the pitch from Robbins. Outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Six hitter in the lineup of West Lafayette. Number 10, Aiden Heap. Brent Robbins out of Sanders to pitch. Going to take one to the left field. Going to be foul territory. Going to give it a look right there. Coming in from left field, making the catch. is Keaton Brooks. Keaton Brooks had to run a long way foul territory to make that catch. And the Knights get out of the inning. West Red Devils leave one aboard. Red Devils put up two here in the bottom of the first inning. And I will also mention this game is in part being brought to you by your home away from home. Do you sometimes wonder how relaxing it would be to take your family to Florida, but you don't have a place to stay? Well, you can enjoy that home away from home in Davenport, Florida. Enjoy a four-bedroom, four-and-a-half bath, spacious town home with a private pool available for short-term or long-term stays. Davenport, Florida is a vacation destination in northeastern Polk County, close proximity to the Walt Disney theme park in Orlando. And if you enjoy the warm sand and the sunny beaches, just 90 minutes separate you from Cocoa Beach, Clearwater Beach, Daytona Beach, and New Smyrna Beaches. You and your family could jump on a plane or hop in a car. When you get to Davenport, Florida, there you are. To inquire, you can direct your emails to 353 Captiva at gmail.com. Again, that's 353 Captiva at gmail.com. 353 C A P T I V A at gmail.com. Stepping into bat number 34, Keaton Brooks. Left handed batter. Working from the stretch. Nobody on. Here comes the pitch. From Taylor. Ground ball back to Taylor. He'll field it. He'll throw left handed over first base. And there's one out in the top of the second. So Chase Taylor pitching from the stretch. Probably does a lot of relief pitching. Coach giving him the start here in this game. Chase Taylor. He's got two appearances. This is number three. This is his first start. Working from the stretch, now the set. Here's the pitch. Mikey Stapleton, ground ball, third base heat, trying to field it. Lost the handle. And Mikey Stapleton going to reach first base on air. So one aboard for the Knights, one out. Top of the second inning. Next batter going to step in. It's going to be number 41, Isaac Subinger. Subinger, left-handed batter. Playing center field in today's contest. Wind's blown across the diamond. A left-hander could maybe get one up in the jet stream. We'll see. We're giving him a stretch. Now the set. Here comes the pitch. Outside edge, strike call. Subinger watching one go by. You look at signals now from Coach Bordenay. Mikey Stapleton at first base, getting a modest lead. Working out of the stretch, looking at signals. Now the set position for Taylor. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Suffinger goes down the count, 0 2. He'll check third base coach, Coach Bordenay. And we'll see if Mikey Stapleton will be on his horse. Mikey Stapleton on the season has six stolen bases. He has yet to be thrown out. A try pickoff move back safely is Stapleton. No balls, two strikes. Stapleton might be on his horse on this pitch. Working out of stretch, check at first base. Now out of set, checks again. Here comes the pitch from Taylor. The foul one back to the screen. Isaac Suffinger stays in the box with that 0-2 count. No balls, two strikes. Chase Taylor pitching a good game. Working in the second inning. Peering over, looking at first base. Ball is made live. Suffinger in the batter's box. Here comes the 0-2 second time. 
breaking pitch stays high, ball one. Just above the zone, didn't get the break he was looking for. One ball, two strikes. Two nothing contest. Red Devils got two in the bottom of the first inning. Here comes the pitch. Swung on, he'll pop one up. Foul territory is going to float out of play, left side. And left handed umpire, you can tell he played the game. One ball, two strikes. Suffrager steps back in, left handed batter's box. Mikey Stapleton is at first base. Two outs on the diamond. Here comes a pitch from Chase Taylor. I take that back. One out on the diamond. And I'm sliding into second base for stolen base number seven for Stapleton. Yet to be thrown out. Hudson Gutwein. Yet to be thrown out. He gets on the base pads. He got on the base pads top of the first. 2 2 count to Suppinger. Here's the pitch from Taylor. Inside a ball. Count goes full. Suppinger goes down the count. 0 oh, 2. Climbs back in. The count is now full. 3 2 count to Isaac Suppinger. Peering in looking at singles. Chase Taylor, a long pier, now out of the set, checks second base. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Swing and a foul ball back to the screen. Just got enough of it. Would have been a drop third, but everybody knew there's a foul ball up there. 3-2 once again. Suffinger steps back in. Paired in, looking at singles. Chase Taylor. Runner at second base, Mikey Stapleton. Here comes the pitch to Suffinger. He'll take one shortstop. Be grounded. Going to be picked up back in. Nice play. Be safe at first base. Difficult play to make. He was kind of in the hole. Backhand stopped by Joe Doty. And Suppinger beats it out. It's going to be an infield hit. So runners on the corners. First and third base. Mikey Stapleton at third base. Isaac Suppinger at first base. Stepping out in front of the plate is Fisher Trotsky. Call the infield play. He's going to step back behind the dish, stepping into bat. Gavin Butel. Gavin Butel playing third base. Where's number 17? Out of the set. First pitch to Butel. Ball inside. A bit tight. Might have been a bit above the zone. Count goes 1 0. One ball, no strikes. Butel steps back in. Working from the stretch. Now the set. Chase Taylor. Pitch comes in. He'll take one to right field. Going to get a little bit of the dirt. Goes on into right field. A little bit of a soft line drive, and it's going to be an RBI off the bat of Gavin Butel. So the Knights put one on the board. It's a 2-1 ball game. One out. Top of the second inning. 5-30 start here at West Lafayette. I think it is a 5-30 start tomorrow now that I think about looking at the calendar. So both games, 5.30 starts. So two aboard for the Knights, first and second base. One out. Out of the set position, Chase Taylor is the pitch. Outside edge, could be a ball. Ball one in the batter's box is number nine, Hudson Gutwine. Gutwine, 37 plate appearances, 29 at bats, he's batting 345 in that right handed batter's box. Out of the set, here comes a pitch from Chase Taylor. Inside of ball, going to be hit by pitch. Going to get him on the foot, he's going to jog immediately to first base. And the Knights have all bases occupied with one out. Timeout on the diamond, going to walk out, going to talk to the infield. Coach Aaron Wood, Chase Taylor. Member of the senior class went out there to talk with his infield. And um, well mentioned, those Indiana Pacers, Pacers making the playoffs. Pacers in their final game of the season. That's the 82nd game. They went against the Atlanta Hawks. They held the Hawks to 115 points. That's in four quarters, and the Pacers put 157 on the scoreboard in four quarters. Unbelievable. 
uh, playoff begin this Sunday, the 21st. Pacers will play the Milwaukee Bucks. And if Tyrese Halliburton, Halliburton going to make the, the USA Olympic team. Stepping into bat, number 10. For the Knights, Lucas Gerke, he's a junior class member. 31 plate appearances, 21 at bats. He's batting 333 from that left handed batter's box. Working out a stretch, now the set. Here comes the pitch from Taylor. Breaking pitch, perfectly up placed right there. Thought for a moment the umpire wasn't going to call that a strike. He got a delayed signal, but he talks right on time up to the plate. They know what they're hearing. Then he shows everybody else a tad bit later. Here comes the pitch. Inside and tight, going to hit by pitch. Lucas Gerke, the jog at first base, jogging in to score the second run for the Knights. It's Isaac Suppinger to tie ball game at two. Top of the second inning. Base is still occupied by the Knights. There's one out. Stepping into bat number 20, senior athlete Kate Minnick. Kate Minnick, nine ball games, 37 plate appearances, 32 at bats. He's batting 344 as the three hitter in that left handed batter's box. Out of the set, Taylor, here's the pitch. Inside and tight, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Kate Minnick, one foot in, one foot out. Looking at signals. A couple of signals given. Bases loaded for the Knights. Working from the stretch. Now the set. Here's the pitch. Right down Meridian. Right below the kneecap. Strike called. One ball, one strike to Kate Minnick. Kate Minnick has a 432 on base percentage. He's got 11 hits on the season. Nine are singles. Two are doubles. Here comes the pitch. Going to take a ground ball. Right side. First baseman was in on the grass. Going to get by him. The two runs going to come in to score for the Knights. Gavin Butel and Hudson Gutwein's a 4-2 ball game. So, Cade Minnick, base hit, picks up two RBI. Cade Minnick now with 11 RBI on the season. Stepping into bat, four hitter, Bryn Robbins. Bryn Robbins wears number 33, senior class member in nine ball games, 34 plate appearances, 27 at bats. He's batting 444 in that right handed batter's box, 515 on base percentage. Got 12 hits, 11 are singles. He has one double. We're going to have a stretch. The set, now the, here comes a pitch to Robbins. Right across the dish, strike call. Watching one go by, Bryn Robbins, 0-1 count. Bryn Robbins has eight RBI on the season. Robbins has scored eight runs. Modestly there at first base by many. Working out a stretch, peering in, looking at singles, Chase Taylor. Now the set position. Here comes the... Oh, one pitch. Crown ball shortstop. Joe Doty flips it to second. They'll go to first, and he's safe at first. But they'll get the out. 6-4 at second base. Joe Doty flips it to Lincoln Furry. And the Knights have two outs here in the bottom. It's going to be the top of the second inning. So next batter going to step in for the Knights. going to be number three, Jackson Kane. Looking at signals. He'll step in now. Brent Robbins, the only base runner. He's at first base. Two outs. Top of the second inning. Knights have five runs in. Here comes the pitch. Breaking pitch. Swing a miss. Sliding into second base. Safe is Robbins. Tag not applied. Brent Robbins going to pick up stolen base number four. Brent Robbins has been caught stealing one time. Stepping back in, Jackson Kane. Peering in, looking at signals. Now out of the set, Chase Taylor is the pitch. Outside of ball. One ball, one strike. Two outs, top of the second inning. Peering in, looking at signals. Out of the stretch from Fisher Trotsky, the catcher. Now out of the set, Taylor checks second base. Here comes a 1-1 to Kane. You know, float one to the outfield. Center field got a lot of air underneath it. Ben Worth is going to make a catch, and the Knights are out of the inning. 
And I'd leave one aboard, and I'd just pick up five runs in the top of the second inning. And after one and a half, night five, Red Devils two. I will also mention this game is in part being brought to you by Arcadia Industrial Park and Storage. That's in Arcadia, Indiana. They have indoor, outdoor storage with flex storage availability. You can call to reserve your space for that safe and secure storage space location right there in Arcadia, indoor, outdoor storage. You can then supply storage for your boats, for your RVs, or for your precious automobiles. That could be a Corvette, could be a Mercedes, could be a Jaguar, could be a Lexus, uh, could be a Pinto. But anyway, or outdoor storage, always available. To contact Arcadia Industrial Park and Self Storage, simply go online at the website is www.aipsindiana.com. Again, that's aipsindiana.com. Or you can call them by telephone at 317-774-1500. Again, that number is 317-774-1500. Listen to a little John Mellencamp. John Mellencamp, he's still good in concert. But I did hear a couple of weeks ago, he had some hecklers. He had a heckler from the audience. And John didn't take too kindly of that. Actually, John had some words for him, and then he walked off stage. I heard they came back out and played about 10 songs less than they would have played uh, if the guy didn't heckle. So he ended, he run the whole concert for everybody there. So I'm going to throw one down right here, Jackson King. And then jump back out again, put the gear on quick. So I'm going to start right up right now. So West Lafayette Red Devils, you're going to send to the plate. Number 17, Camden Proctor. Camden Proctor, where's number 17? He's the DH. Camden Proctor is a senior. He's batting in place of defensive player, the pitcher. Number 24, Chase Taylor, focusing on pitching in today's ball game to start out. Pitch comes in, foul ball, back to the screen. Left-handed batter's box, Camden Proctor. No balls, one strike. He'll step back in. Brand Robbins, right-handed pitcher. Peering in, looking at singles over that glove. Here comes the wine to Proctor. Here's the pitch. Outside of ball. One ball, one strike. Camden Proctor, left-handed batter's box. Peering in, looking at singles, Brent Robbins. Here comes the wine and the pitch. Outside ball two. Two balls, one strike. Brent Robbins, senior class member. Camden Proctor, senior class member. Perrin looking at singles. Here comes a wide in the pitch. Strike call. Must have been the top of the zone. Top of the zone count goes to two. Two balls, two strikes. Perrin looking at singles. Brent Robbins. Here comes a wind in the 2-2 pitch. Back to a curveball in there for a strike. Let's it go by. Brent Robbins going to pick up a strike out there. You know, go down looking. Brent Robbins now with 13 strikeouts since five. Went down looking. Stepping into bat, number 14, eight hitter, Fisher Trotsky. Right-handed pitcher, excuse me, batter, excuse me. And he is the catcher. Here comes the pitch. Low for a ball. Good backhand block by Jackson Kane. One ball, no strikes. One out. Bottom of the second inning. 5-2 ball game. Knights got five in the top half. Pitch comes in. Just above the zone. Two balls, no strikes. Home plate umpire looking for that hand over fist strike zone. The batter can't swing hand over fist. It's too tall. Here comes a pitch. Ball three. 
three balls, no strikes. Brent Robinson's going to step back behind the rubber, kind of collect himself, step back on the rubber. 3-0 kill to Fisher Trotsky. Working from the windup, Brent Robbins. Here comes a wind in the pitch. Ball four. Four pitch walk to the catcher. Trotsky, let's see, they're going to run for him. They're going to get a courtesy runner. Courtesy runner going to walk out. I believe it's number two. No, double check here. Stepping in the back will be the nine hitter for West Lafayette. Jacob Deutsch. Deutsch playing right field in today's ball game. Right handed batter's box. Straight away stance. From the stretch, Ben Robbins looking at singles. Now out of the set. Set position. Here comes the first no pickoff move. Back to first base, head first. Tag applied, safe. At first base. They get a modest lead right there. You might see the first pitch here. To Deutsch, you're going to put a bunt down. Right side, fielded by the pitcher. Brent Robbins tosses it over to first base. And rounding second base a bit much. Couldn't get back. Lucas Kirky tosses it over to Hudson Gutwein, and they get a double play out of it. So the Knights erase the bases. And that's going to be the third out. I take that back. Third out. A lot of folks, even myself included, thought that was a second out. I don't play the umpire thought the same thing. But um, Coach Aaron Wood, he knew exactly what was going on. He started walking towards the dugout. So at the end of two completes, Knights 5, Red Devils 2. I will also mention today's ball game is brought to you in parts by Reynolds Farm Equipment. Reynolds Farm Equipment since 1955. ReynoldsFarmEquipment.com, your social, as you say, your central Indiana equipment dealer, serving customers and the community. Yes, since 1955, Reynolds Farm Equipment, they're family owned and operated. Reynolds Farm Equipment, they supply farmers, landscapers, contractors, and homeowners of central Indiana with the full line of new and used John Deere products. Parts and service for agriculture, residential and commercial construction equipment. Reynolds Farm Equipment, they are open Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday, 7.30 to noon. They're closed on Sunday. They're located in Hamilton County along U.S. 31, 1451 East, 276th Street, Atlanta, Indiana. And right there inside Reynolds, Titus Bakery in Delhi. Titus Bakery in Delhi. They're open 7 to 2 on Saturday, 7 to noon. Stepping into bat, second time for the Knights. Keaton Brooks. Out of the here comes a pitch. Outside at half, strike cold. Keaton Brooks batting in the lineup in number six position. Keaton Brooks, a senior. Here comes a second pitch. He'll take one to shortstop, line shot, soft liner, caught by shortstop Joe Doty. There's one out here in the top of the third inning. So next batter going to step in for the Knights is going to be number 11, Mikey Stapleton. Seven hitter for the Knights, Mikey Stapleton. He's a sophomore, 36, plate appearances, 28 at bats. He's batting 250. 382 on base percentage. Right into batter's box. First pitch. Breaking pitch. Back door. In there for a strike. Mikey Stapleton has seven hits on the season. He got six singles and he has the lone home run thus far for the Knights. Here comes the pitch. Ground ball. Shortstop. Backhands it deep in the hole. He'll make the throw to first base and it's going to be another infield single. For Mikey Stapleton. So Stapleton is aboard with one out. And stepping into bat is going to be number 41, Isaac Seppinger. Seppinger, the eight hitter, playing center field in today's ball game. He's a senior, 19 plate appearances, 15 at bats. He's batting an even 200. That's the lowest batting average that put me in sports will mention in a high school game.
How the set. Here comes the pitch to Suppinger. Going to get by the catcher. Try to block it. Goes back to the screen. Probably going to go in the book as a wild pitch. Taking second base on the misplayed baseball is Mikey Stapleton. One ball, no strike. Seppinger, one foot in, one foot out. Seppinger has a 316 on base percentage. He's got three hits. He's got a single and two doubles. He's got nine quality at-bats in 19 plate appearances. Out of the set, it comes a pitch from Chase Taylor. A little bit toss. Fastball. Might have had a little bit of a tail to it. Count goes 2-0 to Seppinger. Two balls, no strikes. Peering in, looking at singles out of stretch. Now the set. Check second base. Here's the pitch. He'll take one in center field. Ben Worth going to come in, going to bounce once. Base hit in the glove. And he'll jog on in. Ben Worth near second base there. He's got some wheels, but Seppinger drops one in. Next batter going to step in for the ninth to nine hitter. Number 17, Gavin Boutel. Boutel looking at signals, one foot in, one foot out. Runners on the corners for the Knights. One out here in the top of the third inning. Seppinger at first base, Mikey Stapleton at third base. Gavin Boutel looking for that first pitch in his second at bat. Working from a stretch, peering in the long pier and a throw to first base. Back safely is Seppinger. Gavin Butel, a senior class member, 29 plate appearances, 26 at bats, batting 346, 393 on base. He got nine hits, they're all singles. Peering in, looking at singles. Chase Taylor now out of a set position. First pitch to Gavin Butel. He was squared a bun. He put it down the third baseline and be picked up. Right there by Chase Taylor. Couldn't get the first handle on it. Had to pick it up twice. And safe at first base is Boutel. Run comes in to score. Mikey Stapleton scores the sixth run on the scoreboard for the Knights. It's going to be an RBI off the bat of Boutel. And that's probably going to be a reached on air for Boutel. So runners at first and second. One out. Stepping into bat. Hudson Gutwein. Here's the pitch. Backdoor curveball stayed outside. Ball one. One foot in, one foot out. Hudson Gutwine looking at singles. Gutwine, a member of the junior class. Peering in looking at singles out of the stretch. Chase Taylor. Now the set. He'll check second base. Here's the pitch. A foul fly one right side. It's going to be foul territory. Giving it a very valiant run. Right there was Jacob Deutsch. I remember Jacob Deutsch when he was a sophomore. Nobody told me how to pronounce his name, and I pronounced it incorrectly. The next year, I apologized to him when he came to the plate. I was pretty embarrassed. But I'm Jacob Deutsch, senior class member now, plays in a good right field position. Stepping into bat, one ball, one strike to Gutwein. Peering in, looking at singles, Chase Taylor. Check second base. Here comes a pitch. You're going to foul one back out of play. Count goes one and two. One ball, two strikes to Gutwein. Two aboard, first and second base. One out. Top of the third inning. Knights have one run in. Working from a stretch. Now the set. I should say the set right now. Here comes a pitch. We'll take one the other way. Going to be a base hit over first base. Gets to the grass. Took that inside out pitch. They're going to get an RBI off the bat of Hudson Gutwein. Isaac Suppinger comes in to score. So an RBI single for Gutwein. Gutwein on the season. That's just his second RBI. But he is the one hitter. Stepping into bat, Lucas Gerke. Runners at first and second base. We step out in front of the plate, call a signal for the infield. Fisher Trotsky, the catcher for the Red Devils. Check second base, out of stretch. Chase Taylor, now the set position. Lucas Gerke, left-handed batter's box. 
Ball's going to get by the catcher laterally. Good block. It veered laterally to his left. And the runner's going to move up 90 feet. So runners at second and third base. Trotsky going to put that wristband back on. Call the signals. Pitcher right there. Might be his batting wristband. And back in the crouch. One ball, no strikes to Gerke. Gerke, a junior class member. Here comes a pitch. Outside the ball. Good short hop block again by Trotsky. Lucas Gerke has 31 plate appearances, 21 at bats. He's batting 333, 548 on base. He's got seven singles. They're all it's just some um, seven hits, I should say. They're all singles. Dirk Gerke on the season has nine RBI. We're in the stretch. Now the set. Here comes the pitch. Swing and a miss. Breaking pitch. Kind of jamming. Lefty facing a lefty. Nice placement right there by by Taylor. Timeout on the diamond. Trotsky wants to go out and talk to Taylor. Catcher and a pitcher. They're talking over right there. Lucas Gerke scored seven runs. He's walked eight times in 31 plate appearances. He's been hit by pitch twice. Go step back in. Peering in, looking at singles. Chase Taylor. Runners at second and third base, one out. Here comes the pitch to Gerke. Breaking pitch, finished low. Three balls, one strike. Taylor going to step back in. Peering in, looking at signals from Trotsky. Long stretch, now the set. Here comes a 3-1 pitch. Ball four. So it jogged down to first base. And Lucas Gerke will load the bases. Mid-time out on the diamond. Coach Aaron Wood going to walk out. Talk with his infield. So the WNBA has a, the best player out of the NCAA of all time. You're talking about scoring. Caitlin Clark. Then what she is going to make a difference, especially in Indianapolis. She's already making a difference. She got a pretty good personality to us on a talk show. Um, they were trying to poke fun at each other, and they did. And she's got a good personality. So we're going to go with a different pitcher here in the top of the third with one out. West Lafayette Red Devils. Going to go with a right-handed pitcher. Going to get warmed up right there. I believe it's number one, Carson Kitchell. Carson Kitchell. Don't know if he's related to Ted Kitchell or not. Too late to get him. Well, anyway, Ted Kitchell got to meet him one time. One time. Uh, it was at Jeff Marchand's uh, wedding reception. I went over to talk to him, told Jeff, I said, that's, 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 that's Ted Kitchell over there. He said, yeah. I said, you think you let me talk to him? He said, yeah, go over there. I went over there and talked to Ted Kitchell. Uh, and um, he talked to me like he had known me my whole life. What a nice guy. And if you don't remember Ted Kitchell, back in 1981, the second time Bobby Knight got a C or, um, NCAA um, title, um, Kitchell was on the team with Randy Whitman. Whitman was my favorite player. And Ted Kitchell, he could, he could um, nail him from the corners. He didn't need a backboard. But Randy Whitman used the backboard quite often. But, um, so back in 76, you know, when IU won all of the games, I'm going to go ahead and mention, um, I, I text with Kit Benson once in a while. He, he texted me on Resurrection Day and um, sent me a nice picture said he is risen and um, that was very nice I didn't ask him to do that he did that on his own free will Kent Benson 6 foot 11 senior for the 76 undefeated team from IU so stepping into bat for the Knights going to be number 20 stepping out in front of the plate Fisher Trotsky for West Lafayette calling the signals Bases are all occupied. One out. 
Take many batting left-handed batter. Peering in, looking at the single south stretch. Now the set. First pitch from Carson Kitchell. Back to our curveballs. Just missed. One ball, no strikes. Carson Kitchell. Carson Kitchell, he's got, this is his appearance number five. Fifth time he's been in the ball game for Coach Wood. He got seven and one-third innings under his belt. Here comes the pitch. False swing. It'll be a foul ball. Going to call it off of him in the box. It did get the plates. But the plate is in fair territory. Count goes one and one. Carson Kitchell has given up 19 hits on the season. He's given up um, just 18 earned runs. I'll tell you that, but it's 21 runs. But he's walked seven. He struck out four. He's faced 49 batters, 175 pitches entering this game. This comes in outside, ball two. He's faced a total of 40 at-bats. And um, while he was pitching, uh, they have stolen 11 bases. I'll mention the West Lafayette Red Devils have not committed a balk all season. Ball goes out of play. Knights have a couple, maybe three, on the season. Two balls, two strikes. Cade Minnick checking signals. He'll check again. He'll step in to, to bat. Choo-choo count. Bases loaded for the Knights. One out. Top of the third inning. Working out a stretch. Now the set. Here's the pitch. Here's your brown ball back up the middle. Going to get through the wickets of Kitchell. They'll make the play at shortstop. He's going to be safe at first base. Nice effort there by Joe Doty. Run comes in to score. Gavin Butel. So they're going to get the second out right there. As they tag second base, close, close proximity. Doty steps on it. Two outs. Stepping in, Bryn Robbins. Brand Robbins, senior class member, 34 plate appearances, 27 at bats. As mentioned, batting 444 in that right handed batter's box or hitter. Pickoff move. They're going to try the 31. They'll go to second base and they're going to get the out. 31 technique. That was Carson Kitchell. Uh, high school baseball is the only place they allow a 31 anymore. Kind of surprised if they allow that. If you throw to third base or fake to third, you just got to make sure your left foot for a right-handed pitcher has to dislodge from the rubber before you turn back to throw to first. And uh, Carson Kitchell, Red, the Red Devils, they do it just textbook perfect. So the Knights are out of the inning. Knights come up with three runs in the top of the third. At the end of two and a half, Knights eight, Red Devils two. And we'll also mention today's ball game is being brought to you in part by AGM Auto. AGM Auto LLC, Arcadia, Indiana. AGM Auto is located one mile west of Arcadia on 266th Street in Hamilton County. The future of your automobile is in good hands when you put your trust with the guys at AGM Auto. Whether it's a routine oil change or the need of the expertise of an experienced AGM technician, AGM wants you to be safe and to stay safe on the road in your automobile. A second type of service offered at AGM Auto is classic car and classic truck restoration. If you still have that older car or truck out back, or maybe it's in the barn and covered up with a tarp, AGM has a passion to reveal the underlying beauty of each and every restoration project they begin. You can find them on Facebook at AGM Auto LLC. You can contact them by telephone at 317-984-5283. Again, that number. Is 317-984-5283. You can transport your car or your truck from anywhere on a flatbed truck. Just bring it over to AGM Auto. They'll sit down, consult with you, and um, hear what you want to achieve. Stepping into bat, 
one hitter pin worth. Where's number two? First pitch outside, ball one. Ben Worth, he's played in all six games. 25 plate appearances, 22 official at bats. He's batting 273, 333 on base percentage. Here's the pitch. Tall for ball two. Ben Worth, 2 0 count. He's got that sliding mitt in that back left pocket. Left handed batter's box. He's got six hits on the season, five are singles. He has a double. Here comes a pitch from Robbins. Outside edge, strike home. Town goes two and one. Two balls, one strike. Ben Worth has scored six runs. He has three RBI. Keep in mind, he's the one hitter. Outside of ball, Town goes three and one. Ben Worth looking for a good pitch here from Robbins. See if Robbins wants to stay in the count. Steps back in. Working from the windup. Here comes a 3-1. And a foul one back out of play, left side, over the Knights' dugout. Ben Worth, he's been hit by pitch one time. He's reached on air one time. He doesn't want to get hit by pitch on ball four. That's a no-no. Here comes the pitch, the 3-2. Swing and a miss. Might have short hop the glove of Kane. He'll throw to first base, drop third. There's one out. Next batter going to step in, number 19, Colin Castens. Colin Castens, two hitter for West Lafayette, playing left field. Colin Castens in six ball games, 24. Played appearances, 20 at bats. He's batting 250. In that right handed batter's box, here's the pitch. Strike called outside half, just below the kneecaps. So Colin Cassins, he got a 348 on base percentage. Peering in, looking at singles, Brent Robbins. Here comes the 1 0 pitch. Swing and a miss. Town goes 0 and 2 to Cassins. Cassins has five hits on the season. He scored four runs. He's got an RBI. He's walked three times. He's been left on base 10 times this season. Pitch comes in, breaking pitch, finishes above the zone. 2-1 count to Castens. Right-handed batter's box. Peering in, looking at signals, Brent Robbins. 2-1 count, here comes a pitch. Take one back up the middle, going to be stabbed by the second baseman, Mikey Stapleton. That ball probably didn't get more than six feet off the ground. It was on the descension when Mikey Stapleton caught it at second base. Two outs here in the bottom of the third. Stepping into bat, three hitter number seven, Jack Schaefer. First baseman, Jack Schaefer, all six games. 24 play appearances, 19 at bats. Schaefer batting 421. In that right handed batter's box, he'll take a first pitch strike. Breaking pitch. No balls, one strike. Jack Schaefer. Jack Schaefer, a 542 on base percentage. More than half the time at the plate, he gets on. Ball goes out of play. Two strikes on Schaefer. To Jack Schaefer, three hitter. No balls, two strikes. Let's step back in. Paired in looking at signals, Brent Robbins. How the wind up, here comes the 0 2. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. He'll go down looking. So the Knights get out of the inning. They send three to the plate. Knights retire them in order. At the end of three complete, Knights eight, Red Devils two. And we'll also mention this game is in parts being brought to you by FritzandFishers.com. FritzandFishers.com. They buy, they sell, they trade, and they'll finance your automobile. They'll help you get financing. And we'll mention they have quality cars, trucks, and SUVs. Preferred low mileage in one owner automobiles. Two Hamilton County, Indiana locations. One is in Fishers at 8599 East 116th Street. 
That phone number there is 317-842-2228. Again, that number is 317-842-2228. And uh, their second location is in Noblesville along State Road 32. They're between Noblesville and Westfield. You can dial them up there at 317-773-2232. 317-773-2232. And uh, you can visit them online or stop in. Visit them on site, fritzandfishers.com. Yeah. You go on the air all the time. I, I watch you. I, I watch you at the finals. We're going to talk about that. Stay still. I'm going to talk to you, okay? <laughs> Step it in. Gonna be Brent Robbins. Brent Robbins, four hitter. He was at the plate when the final out was recorded as second base in the in the top of the third. We're at the top of the fourth inning, working on a stretch. Now the set. Carson Kitchell, first pitch low for ball one. I talk to you between if you want. Okay. All right, one ball, no strikes. Kitchell gonna adjust his build the hat, I should say. Peering in, looking at signals. Now the set. Here comes a pitch to Robbins. He'll take one foul ball right side out of play. Now, stay tuned. At the end of this half inning, we're gonna to talk to Jane Shot. We got a lot of things we can talk to her about. She is she's ambidextrous in everything she does. Uh, stepping in, Brent Robbins. One ball, one strike. Got some. Got some raindrops, mild ones hitting the window. Here comes a pitch. Low for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Brent Robbins, four-header for the night. Senior class member, 5'10", 195, doing the pitching in today's ball game. Here comes a 2-1 pitch from Kitchell. Swing and a miss. Count goes even at two and two. Brent Robbins... Try to drive that pitch. He's going to have to just try to make contact with two strikes. Peering in, looking at signals. Carson Kitchell from catcher. Fisher Trotsky. Here comes a 2-2 pitch to Robbins. Ground ball, third base. Got a glove on it. Going to veer over. Picked up by Joe Doty. Aiden Heap. Got a glove on that scorcher. It was a low hop. And base safe at first base is Brent Robbins. Going to be an infield hit. So Jack Reisman going to jog out. He's going to be the courtesy runner for Robbins. Jack Reisman wears number 31. Jack Reisman is senior. Six foot five, 220. The next batter going to step in. Jackson Kane, right-handed batter spot. Jack Kane, Jackson Kane batting in the fifth spot in this ball game. Working from a stretch, Carson Kitchell checks first base. Now the set position, here comes the pitch. Swing and a miss. Jackson Kane steps in. He's a junior class member. He's played in all nine games. He's also 5'10", 195. He gets that 195 from the weight room. 34 plate appearances, 27 at bats. He's batting 259. He's got an on-base percentage of 382. Working out a set. Kitchell's pitch. Outside, ball one. Lights are on here at West Lafayette High School. Sky's a little bit dingy. It was a nice day today. They said today was the third day in a row we've seen 80 degrees plus in central Indiana. Here comes a pitch. Going to take one. Center field, Ben Worth. Going to drop back, make the catch. Jackson Kane making good contact. But hitting right at the defenders. One out here in the top of the fourth. Next batter going to step in, 34, Keith Brooks. Keith Brooks, senior class member. He's played in all nine games. 28 plate appearances, 26 at bats. Turn in, looking at signals. Carson Kitchell checks first base out of the stretch. Now the set. Here comes the pitch. Backdoor curveball, just missed. Outside. One ball, no strikes. Keaton Brooks got five hits on the season. 
Three are singles, two are doubles. Down in looking at singles, second first base out of the stretch. Now the set for Kitchell. Here's the pitch. Short off the glove. Nice stop by Fisher Trotsky. Kept that ball in front of him. Staying at first base is Jack Reisman. Two balls, no strikes, signals given. Third base coach, Tim Bordenay. Modest lead at first base for Reisman. Six foot five. We're going to have a stretch. Now the set. Here comes the 2 0. Just outside a ball. Three balls, no strikes. 3 0 count. Probably have the cake sign on for Keaton Brooks. Home plate. Strike zone is wide open for Kitchell. Low for ball four. So Jack Reisman goes jog over to second base. Runners at first and second for the Knights. One out. Top of the fourth inning. Next batter going to step in. Number 11, sophomore athlete Mikey Stapleton. Stapleton plays second base in today's ball game. Right-handed pass box. Working from the stretch. Paired in looking at signals. Carson Kitzel. Long pier. Go from the set position. Check second base. First pitch to Stapleton. Ground ball just foul of third base on the ground. No balls, one strike. Mikey Stapleton. Batting 250 on the season, 382 on base. Seven hits overall. He's got six singles. And he has one home run at Riverton Park down the right field line. 293 on the fence there. Peering in, looking at singles. Carson Kitchell. Out the set. There's a pickoff move. Timing play. Back safely is Reisman. No balls, one strike. Steps back in. Mikey Stapleton. Stapleton, 5'11", 165. Working out a stretch. Now the set. Checks again. Here's the pitch. Short off the glove. Nice block for Trotsky. Trotsky keeping that baseball in front of him. Trotsky, a member of the sophomore class. Starting catcher. For West Lafayette Red Devils. Out of the set, check second base. Here comes a pitch. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. So righty facing a righty. Difficult pitch to pick up. And I'm going to call time out here for a moment as Trotsky tie his shoe. Difficult place to tie his shoe when you got that. The shin guard on, you got to kind of scoot it out of the way. Sometimes umpire might help you out there. So I helped one out on a Sunday at a doubleheader, 11-year-olds. Got to do eighth grade last night. Yeah, that was fun. Out of the set, check second base. Here comes the pitch. Going to pop one to center field. Going to get a beat on it, making the catch. Bearing to his right, then work. Ben Worth plays a good outfield position. And uh, there's some lightning. Got some lightning chop, chop level there. So um, it's pretty far in the distance, evidently. So um, there's two outs on the diamond. We're in the top of the fourth inning. Stepping into that, Isaac Suppinger. Turn in, looking at signals. Now it's set. Here comes the first pitch to Isaac. Swing and a miss. Number 31, Isaac going to step back in. And the home plate umpire saw that. There was another lightning bolt left side about right center field there. First one was in center field. It was a more severe strike. And he's going to have his... Um, Base umpire, I guess, look for it, but I don't know how he's going to see it. So, James Schott will take care of everyone. She's a good lady. She beat Hamilton Heights girls basketball teams twice last two years. Here comes a pitch. One ball, one strike. James Schott 
he shot his varsity basketball coach. And um, so what James shot has a record of 239 and 154 right here at West Lafayette. She's getting ready to start her 18th season. And a home plate umpire has something to say there. So they're going to probably evacuate the field. And they got lightning in the distance. I think that's a 30 minute delay, provided you don't see another one, or it will overlap and begin a new 30 minute delay. So we're going to ask the guys to get in the dugouts, maybe even get in their cars. And we're going to take priority one is safety of these young men. So we're going to take a breather right there. And I'm going to have a lightning delay. I'll go ahead and mention Jane Schott. Jane Schott, she does coaching here at West Lafayette Girls Basketball. And um, she's tremendous. And um, when her season's over, she has the opportunity to, to help out in the, in the girls' finals right there at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Uh, she works as the collar commentator, and uh, she does a tremendous job. And I would guess Jane Schott's about six foot two or maybe six three. She's a tall lady. I bet she, there's some more better lightning right there at 642. So we're going to probably set this down and come back uh, if there is any more baseball to be played here in this evening. 642 on the wristwatch. One ball, one strike on the batter. It's an 8-2 contest. Knights in front. And I'm taking a breather right here, making sure the guys are safe. So please stay tuned. We're going to set this down, and uh, we'll come back and let you know what's happening on the diamond. Or if nothing is happening, we'll let you know that also. So thank you for listening. We'll be right back in a bit. Yes, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
So we got the thumbs up. We're getting ready to play baseball. Going out to resume the base running. Jack Reisman of Central Catholic going to second base. And uh, put the runner over there at first base. And they're going to get warmed up right here. Carson Kitchell getting warmed up. And then Keaton Brooks will be at first base. And we'll mention this game is in part being brought to you by Sign Production. A business with a good sign is a sign of good business. Computer-generated, painted, and sandblasted signs, billboard advertising, large format signage, vehicle graphics and lettering, along with banners and window lettering. A sign production since 1985. You can dial them by telephone or you can send a text message. 317 946 2424. Again, that's 317-946-2424. And it looks like Carson Kitt's about ready to go. He says, I've had ample enough warm-ups. He's ready to go. And the umpires will take their respective positions. Field umpire, stand over in C position. That's left side of pitcher's rubber. <laughs> lined up with the dirt of the mound and home plate. So stepping in again, Isaac Sutter, one one kill. Carson Kitchell looking in signals. Now the stretch, now the set. Here comes a pitch, seven nineteen backdoor curveball. Good in there for a strike count goes one and two. One ball, two strikes. Isaac Sutter, two out. Two aboard for the Knights, first and second base. Turn in, look at singles. Carson Kitchell, out of the set, check second base. Here's the pitch. Swung on, ground ball, first base. Could be fielded by the first baseman, Jack Schaefer. He goes unassisted for the third out. So the Knights lead two aboard. Knights come up with no runs here in the fourth. And as we'll mention, at the end of three and a half, Knights eight. Red Devils 2. And again, we do thank you for tuning in. We'll mention this game is in part being brought to you by Thomas Docks Incorporated. Thomas Docks, they have high quality, custom built, waterfront products and services. Docks, boat lifts, walls, dock accessories, marine services, etc. Thomas Docks Incorporated at thomasdocks.com. You can find them on the web. They're located at 20799 Riverwood Avenue, Noblesville, Indiana, 46062. Thomas Stocks, locally owned and operated since 1993. You can dial them by telephone at 317-774-3790. Again, their number is 317-774-3790. Monday through Friday, you can find them on location at 9 a from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. or by appointment. I will also mention Thomas Stocks. You can choose the company that has the equipment to maintain and service new and existing waterfront projects. They'll do that in the state of Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, Michigan, Kentucky, with the capabilities to work all across the United States. That's Thomas Docks. So Red, Red Devils get ready to step in. It's going to be number 16, the four hitter, Lincoln Furry. Lincoln Furry playing second base in the ballgame. He gets six games under his belt. 23 played appearances, 20 at bats. He made 350, 435 on base percentage. First pitch from Robbins. Bottom of the fourth. Pitch comes in just above the zone, ball one. Furry's got seven hits on the season. He's got two doubles. Right handed batter's box. Back and forth for Coach Wood. You can take one the other way. Foul ball. In the bullpen area. And the protectors working down there. That went over his head. So one ball, one strike. Look at the signals. Coach Aaron Wood, head coach of the Red Devils. Remember, not too long ago, it was Joel Strode. I always enjoyed speaking with him. The ground ball, third base, fueled by Goodwine. 
take that back as Blue Tail throws across the diamond and gets the put out with Lucas Gerke. So one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Next batter going to step in. It's going to be number nine, Joe Doty. Joe Doty going to step in. He's in six ball games, 21 play appearances, 16 at bats. But he's 375 in that right handed batter's box. He gets on base more than half the time. 524 on base percentage. Here comes the pitch. Ground ball, third base. We tell, going to have another one. Deals with it, throws across the diamond. And Lucas Gerke makes a good stop. Off the one hop, the first baseman takes away an error. And that's his job. My brother used to play first base. All the way through high school, he, um, he erased a whole bunch of errors before they ever happened. Good glove at first base. The seven and two outs. Going to be number 10, Aiden Heap. Aiden Heap, third baseman, had a good conversation in the timeout we took with his mom and dad. Pretty quality folks right there. He's fortunate to have a mom and dad to show up for all of his games. You know they would. No balls, one strike. Here's the pitch to Heap. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. No balls, two strikes. Aiden Heap, where's number 10? Batting 333 on the season. 444 on base percentage. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. Outside ball one. One ball, two strikes. Aiden Heap, third baseman. He's got five hits on the season. Four are singles. He's got one double. Working from the windup. Robbins, here's the one two. Swing and miss. He'll set down. And the Knights will enter the dugout at the end of four completes. Knights, eight. Red Devils, two. And again, we do thank you for tuning in. I will mention this game is in part being brought to you by PutMeInSports.com. Internet radio sports since 2008. Happy to support education-based high school varsity sports. Baseball in the spring. Lafayette Central Catholic Knights baseball. Football in the fall. Tips and Blue Devils football. Basketball in the winter. Tips and Blue Devils boys basketball. And I will also mention this game is in part being brought to you by Camino and Company. Dot com. Camino and Company, that's Camino-A-N-D-Company.com. Camino and Company, a mobile flower shop brought to you by local flower farmers and providers, small business partners, and the C&C founders. That's a 1984 El Camino, which belongs to my dad, which is Carly's grandpa. Car is the owner of Camino and Company, and their goal at Camino and Company is to please each customer from their concepts to Camino and Company's completion. You can explore the website at Camino A N D Company dot com. Camino and Company, they'll provide for weddings, flowers, about any type of events, give them a call. Right now they're booking 2024 brides. You can contact them at their website, camino and company.com. Step in for the Knights, top of the fifth inning. Could be number 17, Gavin Butel. Gavin Butel going to step in. Left-handed hurler. On the pitches, rubber right now is number 20, Maddox Bramer. Inside tight, you're going to get him on the leg. He'll jog down to first base. That's number 20, Maddox Bramer. He's a junior class member. Maddox Bramer making his second appearance in the, in the season. He's got one and one-third innings under his belt. He's allowed five hits, five runs. All five runs were earned. He's walked three. He has struck out one. Takes 13 batters, 40 pitches. And um, he's allowed one solo base. They had solo base one time while he was pitching. Pitch comes in. Outside half, strike called. In the batter's box for the Knights, number nine, Hudson Gutwein. Hudson Gutwein plays shortstop for the Knights. 
at first base. The runner is Gavin Buchel. How was sad? Here comes the pitch. Go square to bunt. Me bunt third base like me killed by heat. He'll throw a first base, throw a strike, and the out is recorded. Mission accomplished with the sacrifice bunt. Moves Buchel to second base. One out here in the top of the fifth. Next batter going to step in. It's going to be number 20, Kate Minnick. Kate Minnick going to step in. Left-handed batter's box. The pitch from the stretch right there is number 20, Maddox Bramer. Peering in, looking at signals. Out of the set, he'll check second base. Here's the pitch. Outside ball one. We are going to talk to the head football coach for the West Lafayette Red Devils here after this inning. Mr. Shane Fry. I have to admit he's probably one of my favorite coaches I've ever met in any sport. Here comes a pitch. He'll take one to right field. It'll be a long take, backing up, trying to make the catch. And he will make the catch. That's Jacob Deutsch tagging up from second base. You're going to try to make it home. You're going to hold him up. Coach Borne holds him up at third base. Sacrifice fly by Caden Minnick. Uh, without a doubt, the longest fly ball he's hit this season. Caden Minnick, known for the base hits, batting in the third spot. Caden Minnick on the season, he does have 11 hits, nine are singles. He has two doubles. He got a sacrifice fly there and it nearly went out of here. Stepping into bat, nice batting, two outs. The second one, the right center field, going to bounce once in the glove of Ben Worth. Coming in to score from third base. It's Gavin Buchel, and a base hit off the bat, and um, he'll make it safely with an RBI. I think that bat, that was Lucas Gerke with the shot to the right center. My ear, I was all frustrated because we're going to have a nice interview up with us, I think. But, um, yeah, that was Lucas Gerke with the drive to right strike field. The sacrifice fly, that was Kate Minnick, base hit, gets an RBI. So, Brent Robbins going to step in out of set position. Step off the back. That's number 20, Maddox Bramer. 9-2 contest. Top of the fifth inning. No rain. We'll hope the rain can stay away. Lightning slowed us up a little bit. You're going to fly one up on the infield. It's going to be called for by the center fielder. And I'm going to be the left fielder making the catch. Colin Castens. Makes the fly high sky ball there up the bat of Robbins. And the Knights are out of the inning. Red Devils are going to bat in the bottom half. And then we're going to talk to, to Coach right here. We're going to talk to Coach Shane Fry. Coach Shane Fry, you've been busy. You took your seven year old daughter to softball practice. Yeah, yeah. We uh, Luckily, we were inside today and we didn't have to deal with any of the uh, storms or the lightning. So they had a nice little AU practice gone. That sounds good. I got a grandson that's seven. Uh, talk about your other daughter. She's a bit younger in age. So, daughter's seven. It's in softball, and I have a son that's four. Um, yeah, and he's just get, sort of getting into some stuff, too. So, I thought I was busy before, but now I'm officially busy, I think. Now I was looking at the directory for West Lafayette. Is your wife the softball coach? Yep, she is. Chauncey, she's, I think, been a softball coach for eight years or so. Hey, when you go home in the evening, does she ask you questions about football, and do you ask her questions about softball? Um, I usually just listen. Uh, she does sometimes ask questions, because usually when she goes to the football game, she's chasing the kids, so she doesn't get to see a lot of it. So um, she does ask some questions, and uh, but that you know, it's rare that we see each other in the fall and spring. It doesn't happen very often, and you know, we bump into each other at Thanksgiving and Christmas, and that's about it. As long as you can still recognize each other, that's good. Yeah, I think we're, we're good there. I think you're good forever. Um, you're going to have a forever wife, aren't you? Absolutely. Yep. We, we got a good combo, and it works. And thankfully, it's two different seasons, and um, you know, our kids are young, so it, it's not too bad right now. I'm coaching, I got to interview you last time on the football field. I mentioned that your record was tremendous. You're now 116 and 23 losses, 83.4 percentage of wins talk about your staff uh, our staff's great i think uh you know obviously we have a lot of great players that have come through here but since i've been here you know going on 20 years we've had uh, the same core group of six or eight coaches the whole time um 
which is super important and, and has stability in our program. And, um, you know, it's great. The players know the expectations and you just got, got guys that have been around forever. Coach, I'm going to mention right now, you're, um, you're pre-game warm-up. Best warm-up I've ever seen. I, I like to hear that because I very rarely watch it. Um, our assistants run it. I am not a fan of pregame just because, uh, you know, I watch, I look out there and our guys catch everything and, and then we drop stuff in the game or I watch them and they drop stuff and, and wreck everything pregame. And then I'm, so I, I'd, I'd rather just show up for the coin toss and, and play ball than watch all that. So what, Coach, you, um, you had a player that um, actually played defense. You lined for him. You started him out. Uh, he went and learned some more stuff. That's George Karloftis. Talk about him. Uh, wow. Two years in the league and, and two Super Bowl championships. And uh, I was texting back and forth with him, and, and he told me this is just the beginning. So he, he's got plans to do even more. Um, great kid. Uh, you know, he's still really humble, even with all these success that he's had. Um, still stays in contact. Obviously, he's back frequently to watch his brother at Purdue, Yanni. And then we've got Nico, uh, who will be a junior lineman for us. So um, he's still got ties here and, and comes back often. And, you know, we're proud that uh, he was part of our program and, and a former Red Devil. And Nico is their younger brother. Yeah, yeah. Sophomore now. He started uh, at right guard for us. Um, and, I mean, he'll start somewhere. We, we don't know where yet, but he's a good player. I, tell you what, I don't know if you know, Carson Wentz is now the backup for Mahomes. I didn't know that. Um, you know, hopefully he doesn't need a backup. But uh, if he does, they, you know, Wentz has got some experience. So uh, they just keep chugging along. They're doing a great job. I want to say something about Carson Wentz. My son lives close to him. My son turned right to go to home. Carson Wentz was not. He was unemployed. He was out in the front yard, fully dressed in gear, practicing. Wow, that's, that's a wild story. <laughs> yeah, that's great. My son's 33. He wouldn't lie to me at all. No question about that. But I'm, I tell you what, you're having a fun time, aren't you? Yeah. Yep. This is a great place. And, uh, you know, we're glad to be Red Devils and love uh, seeing all the success that our programs have had and out here supporting the baseball team. Hopefully they can get a rally here shortly. Hey, last time I saw you on the sideline, I asked you and um, asked you about going to see Carl Loftus. You said you and your staff was going to try to go see him last December. Yeah, we got uh, we went out to the home game. Uh, was that last year? No, but it was rookie year. Uh, we got to see him play um, the Colts, and they actually they, were, they lost that game, um, but had a great year. You know, they had very few losses in the regular season. Went on to win the Super Bowl, obviously. Uh, but you know, who knows how long his career is going to last? We're going to try to get to quite a few more games as well. That sounds excellent. I, I tell you what, I appreciate you coming up here. I'm going to probably do my, my day job here. But thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot for having me, and hopefully we see you in the near future. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you, sir. So that's going to complete the top half. I tell you what, the bottom half, actually. The fifth inning, we're going to the top of the sixth. We'll mention after five completes, Central Catholic Knights, nine. West Lafayette Red Devils, two. And uh, we're going to hear some John Cougar Mellencamp. So with that, I knew that'd be a good interview. We've never had a bad interview with Mr. Shane Fry, the head football coach at West Lafayette High School. And he's told us talk about being there 20 years. Absolutely. He's been, a, he's been an assistant to start out. Uh, Marshall Overly was the coach uh, back in, back in um, Lancaster days, named after they won the state title. I think that was, uh, I'm trying to remember escapes me, but we'll miss him. Coach Shane Fry getting ready to start his 12th season as a head coach of the West Lafayette Red Devils. So we get warmed up right there, and I will mention this game is in parts being brought to you by Lisa Stokes Fair. Lisa Stokes Fair, Century 21. When you're thinking about residential or corporate relocations, you know a perfect house can become a perfect home. And Lisa Stokes Fair would like nothing more than to utilize her 20 plus years of experience to help you begin that process. Yes, real estate reliability is something a professional real estate agents and or real estate broker strives for, such as Lisa Stokes Fair. Your happiness and her success are two of the same. For the real estate lady with the high real estate IQ, you can contact Lisa Stokes there at 317 513 
317-513-4086. Again, her number is 317-513-4086. You can text her or you can call her. Lisa Stokes there. She'll help you, even if it's typically Gary. Give her a call. Stepping in, Jackson Kane. First batter, top of the sixth inning. We're going to pitchers now, Maddox Bramer. Perry looking singles out of the windup. Here comes the pitch. Big backdoor curveball foul ball. We fielded it by Coach Borne in the box there at third base. No balls, one strike. Oh, one count, a step back in, right handed bounce box. Jackson Kane. Here comes the wind and the pitch from Bramer. Just above the zone, ball one. One ball, one strike. Jackson Kane, first batter here in the sixth inning. Defense played him almost straight away. Here comes the pitch. Upstairs just a bit, ball two. Two balls, one strike. Maddox Bramer, a member of the junior class. The sun is going to come out. I hope so. Here comes the pitch. Going to take one of the left field. Got a lot of it. It's going to back up the left fielder. It's going to be off, off the wall there. And left field, Colin Katzins. And Jackson Keene ends up with a double. Had a lot of air under that. Uh, it's going to end up at second base. Jackson Kane trying to climb on that average of 259. So Jackson Kane comes up with his third two base hit on the season. That's bad who's stepping in. He's a courtesy runner. Courtesy runner can go out. It's Calvin Reisman. Calvin Reisman. He's going to go out for running capabilities. He's the courtesy runner for Jackson Kane, the catcher. Stepping into that, it's Keaton Brooks, the sun, coming out, making it beautiful. Absolutely, the sun, probably the most advantageous asset that we as humans can be thankful for. Out of set, set second base, the second time is the pitch. Outside, ball one. Keaton Brooks getting signals from Coach Bordney. To the running at second base, Calvin Reisman. He's a sophomore, 6'1, 155. Here comes the second pitch to Keaton Brooks. Breaking pitch nearly got the strike zone. He just fell below. Two balls, no strikes. Keaton Brooks going to step back in. Senior class member, 6'2, 165. Here they look at singles out of the stretch. Now the set checks second base. Here comes a pitch from Maddox Bramer. Just missed outside a ball. Profile view of that pitch probably looked pretty good. Three balls, no strikes. Out of the set. Here comes a 3 0. Let's it go by. Home plate was wide open. Take pitch for Brooks. Count goes three and one. Top of the sixth inning. Beautiful day for baseball now that that sky is going away. Outside ball four. So Pete Brooks jogs to first base. Runners at first and second base. Nobody out. Pete Brooks at first base. Calvin Reisman at second base. Next batter will be number 11, Mikey Stapleton. Second baseman for the Knights bats in the seventh position. He'll step in right here to the batter's box. Period of looking at singles. Maddox Bramer, here's the pitch. He'll square the bun. Go put the bun down right in front of the third baseline. Slipping down, trying to make the play there. With the pitcher, Maddox Bramer. Uh, that same thing happened last game. Had some moist grass. That grass gets moist if you got molded cleats. That's difficult. I'm not sure if you got molded or steel. So stepping into bat would be Isaac Seppinger. Bases are loaded for the Knights. Nobody out. Left in batter Seppinger. Seppinger batting an even 200 even entering the ball game. 
looks like a slap and go right center field. He's going to get the gap. It's going to bounce to the wall. They're going to pick it up at the wall to throw it in. Something's going to end up with a triple. He's going to throw throw it at the plate. They'll cut it. And Suffinger gets the first triple for the night. So the season, he clears the bases. He gets three RBI. So Suffinger is at third base. I believe that to be true. Yeah. The only triple they've got this season thus far. So Gavin Butel going to step in. Night hitter. Plays third base in today's contest. We're going to have a stretch. Now the set. Righty. You know, back to shortstop. Going to glove it. High hop. Made a good play. They throw to first base. They're going to say he's safe at first base. So running that ball out was Gavin Butel. It's going to be an infield hit. It was deep in the hole right there. And it's going to be an RBI for Butel as Suffinger comes in to score from third base. Next batter going to step in. It's going to be number nine, Hudson Gutwein. Gutwein right in the batter's box. He's the one hitter. He's the only beat off batter in this game. Here's the pitch. Just above the zone, ball one. One runner on. Hudson Gutwein batting nobody out. Top of the sixth inning. We're talking to stretch. Now the set. Here comes the pitch. It's a healthy cut. Swing and miss. One one tail. Hudson Gutwein, one foot in, one foot out. A couple of signals given, he'll step back in. Working from the stretch, Perry looking at signals. It's Maddox Bramer. Here comes a pitch. Backdoor curveball. Hopefully, hopefully if I want to call a strike, it finished a bit low. And umpire school, the umpires are taught. So when that ball comes out of the pitcher's hand, he's thinking strike, 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 until it's proven to be a ball. This comes in just above the zone. Three balls, one strike. That's a good line going to step back in. Three, one count. Darren in looking at singles out of the stretch. Maddox Bramer has the pitch. You call that ball four. That was borderline strike material. You know, walk has a good one. And time out of the diamond, Coach Aaron Wood going to walk out. Going to talk with his pitcher's mail. I think that's going to include the catcher and the pitcher. And I think the second baseman is going to join in on the conversation. So we like Africa. We like that song. So they're going to talk it over right there on the pitcher driver. They're going to go with a different pitcher. So Bramer's getting some medium fives as he enters the dugout. Why not? He's deserving. And I will also mention your home away from home. Do you sometimes wonder how relaxing it would be to take your family to Florida, but you don't have a place to stay? Well, you can enjoy that home away from home in Davenport, Florida. Enjoy a four-bedroom, four-and-a-half bath, spacious town home with a private pool available for short-term or long-term stays. Davenport, Florida is a vacation destination in northeastern Polk County, close proximity to the Walt Disney theme park in Orlando. And if you enjoy the warm sand and the sunny beaches, just 90 minutes separate you from Cocoa, Clearwater, Daytona, and New Smyrna beaches. You and your family could jump on a plane or hop in a car. When you get to Davenport, Florida, there you are. To inquire, you can direct your emails to 353-TAPTIVA at gmail.com. Again, that's 353-TAPTIVA at gmail.com. 353-C-A-P-T-I-V-A at gmail.com. Your home away from home. So you get some warm up tosses right there on the pitcher's rubber. 16 is Camden Proctor. He's a senior. Camden Proctor. Getting loose right here. He's getting an opportunity. And 
his second appearance as pitcher for Coach Aaron Wood. Stepping in nice runners at first and second base. Here comes pitch. He did not have to go back to the screen. Runners are going to move up 90 feet. So track that one down. And working right there in the batter's box again is number 10, Lucas Perky. I was Aaron the last time when he was at the play. It wasn't Kate Minnick. Lucas Turkey drove one to right field, went off the wall, right to pace up. Nearly got the jog. Here comes the pitch. High for ball two. <laughs> two balls, no strikes. Steps back in, left handed batter's box. Lucas Turkey batting 333 on the season. And I'm called Buck. And we're going to call the first buck of the season, Red Devils, jogging in from third base is Gavin Buchel. Over to third base from second base is Hudson Goodwin. So two balls, no strikes. Stepping back in, Lucas Gerke. We're going to have a stretch. Now the set. Here's the pitch. Ball three. Three balls, no strikes. 16, Lincoln Furry, junior class member. Turn it out, stretch looking singles. From Trotsky, here comes the pitch. You call a ball. Huh. So, three balls, no strikes. We're going to have stretch now the set. Here comes the pitch. Ball four. So, ball four, but Skirky at first base, runners on the corners. I just gonna step in with a three hitter, number 20, Kate Minnick. Kate Minnick last time up, got a base hit RBI. Left-handed batter's box, Perry looking at singles. Out of the set, here comes the pitch. Above the zone, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Lincoln Furry, junior class member. Stepping back in is Kate Minnick. Lefty batter, righty pitcher. Pitch comes in tight. It's going to hit him head by pitch. He didn't move a whole lot. They say he got a flinch at least. And I'm not sure if he did. But he's at first base now. Runners on each base. So nights. Top of the sixth inning. I have seen umpires leave a batter in the box for not moving to get out of the way of the pitch. And that might be what they're talking about right there. Home plate umpire, Red Devils dugout, and I think that's a viable conversation to have. So, get ready to step in. Brent Robbins. Brent Robbins, four-header for the Knights. From the pitching in today's ball game, here comes the wide and the pitch. He'll take one base hit to left field, one hop in the glove of Castings. He'll throw it in at the cutoff. It's going to be an RBI single for Brent Robbins as Hudson Gutwine comes in to score. So base is still occupied by the Knights. Nobody else stepping in. Jackson Kane. Jackson T last time up drove one to left field, had a lot of air underneath it. Got by the left fielder cast and he ended up on second base. Working from the wide gap. 16 Lincoln Furry is the pitch. Short off the glove, good block by Trotsky. Trotsky saved the run. Good block went laterally. Picked it up just outside the dirt. Nice plate surround right here at West Lafayette High School. I've always liked that West Lafayette logo. Working from the wide up. Here comes a pitch from Furry. Here's the pitch. High and outside. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Jackson Kane working on that average. He's climbing in this ball game. He's got four RBI on the season. He's got three. Ducks on the pond. Here comes the pitch. Outside edge. Going to call the strike. He calls the strike immediately at home plate. 
And then he gives a delayed signal, or signal, I should say, to those who can't hear him. Working out a wind up. Here comes the pitch to 2 1. Outside of balls, we're going to get back to the screen. Coming in from third base. The score run for the Knights is Lucas Gurky. Three balls, one strike. Jackson Kane may see the best pitch he'll see in this at bat on this fifth toss. His first fifth toss from Lincoln Furry. Turning in out of stretch. Now the set. Here's the pitch. Step up the zone, ball four. So Jackson Kane will do his own running, we think so. Maybe he won't. Coach Borne gonna walk down and make an adjustment in the lineup. Uh, then we're gonna see Jack Reisman. Jack Reisman is gonna pinch hit. Reisman will pinch hit for Keaton Brooks in the sixth spot. And I'm going to be a timeout on the guy, Coach Aaron Wood. And I'm going to change pitches once again. And I'm so going to go with a, a different pitcher. He's going to be a right-handed hurler. And I'm out on the pitcher's rubber. We'll try to capture that number. I think it's 18. I believe it's 18. We'll try to make sure that's for sure. And um, we'll also mention this game is in part being brought to you by Arcadia Industrial Park and Storage, Arcadia, Indiana. Indoor outdoor storage with flex storage availability. So, it's number 10. On the pitcher's rubber, he's getting his first opportunity uh, pitching here in the early season. And we'll also mention Arcadia Industrial Park and Storage. It's indoor, outdoor storage with flex storage availability. You can call to reserve your space for that safe and secure storage space location. Indoor storage for your boats, RVs, and your precious automobiles. Or outdoor storage, always available. To contact Arcadia Industrial Park and Storage, simply go online at www.aipsindiana.com. That's aipsindiana.com. Or you can call them by telephone at 317-774-1500. Again, 317-774-1500. Again, some final warm-up tosses right there. Number 10, Aiden Heap. Aiden Heap comes over from third base. Again, warmed up right now, warming up from the stretch. Knights have three runners on base. Nobody out. Top of the sixth inning. 16-2 contest. Red Devils got two in the bottom of the first inning. So, finishing up the warm-up tosses, Aiden Heap. A breaking pitch right across the dish, the eye. So he's going to get briefed right there by the home of the infield umpire, let him know there's three on base, nobody out, and a brand new batter in the box. It's going to be number 31, Jack Reisman. Jack Reisman is doing the hitting. Substitute pitch hitting for Keaton Brooks. Here comes a pitch from Heat. Outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Jack Reisman, 31. He's a senior class member. He's been in four ball games. This is number five. This is his third plate appearance on the season. He'll be hit by pitch. And right into batter's box. He'll jog to first base. So coming in to score, third base is Caden Minnick. Next batter going to step in for the Knights, number 11, Mikey Stapleton. Mikey Stapleton, second baseman. Sophomore athlete, Stapleton bats into the seventh spot. We're going to have a stretch. Now the set for Heap. Here comes the pitch. Breaking pitch just upstairs. One ball, no strikes. Here in, looking at Staples. Out of stretch. Now the set. Here comes a pitch from Aiden Heap. 
going to be a ground ball get hit to third base hit in the left field. Coming in to score from third base is Brad Robbins in a base hit RBI off the bat of Mikey Stapleton. Mikey Stapleton picks up RBI number four on the season and his seventh base hit. So Doug and Al going to be a pitch runner. Pitch runner is going to be number 13, Calvin Reisman. Calvin Reisman is the brother, brother of Jack Reisman. So they're both on base right now, brothers. Here comes the first pitch from Heath. Swung on, Sappinger on the infield. It's going to be a foul territory called for by Trotsky. And it's going to drop. It's going to be a foul ball. So Isaac Sappinger, a little bit of an uppercut there. Left-handed batter's box. Senior class member participating in game number seven on the season. Uh, the tenth. He's working on a stretch. Now the set. Here comes a pitch from Heat. Look at all just above the zone. Count goes one and one. One ball, one strike. Pairing with the singles. Heat now out of the set. Here comes a one one pitch. He's going to drive it to center field. Worth is going to back up. He's going to come in now. He'll make the catch. He's, he's getting his body's position to make a good throw to the plate. He saved it to play on the slide. It was cut off. It was just off target. Saved at third base. In a run down between second and first now. And a tag out. That's a pretty vicious tag out. And that home plate, they're going to call him safe. And I've seen um, I've seen people thrown out of the game for, for less of a vicious tag. So they get the out between second and first base. They get one run in, as far as I know. And the bases are now empty. Seven in, 17. Gavin Butel. Out of the set, he appears to pitch. Ground ball, second base. Midfielded by second baseman to throw it first. I'm going to call him out. Out at first base, getting the put out, is Jack Schaefer. So we'll go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Knights in front. And we'll also mention this game is in part being brought to you by Reynolds Farm Equipment since 1955. RiddlesFarmEquipment.com, your central Indiana equipment dealer, serving customers and the community. Yes, since 1955. Reynolds Farm Equipment, family owned and operated. Reynolds Farm Equipment supplies farmers, landscapers, contractors, and homeowners of Central Indiana with the full line of new and used certified John Deere products. Parts and service for agriculture, residential and commercial construction equipment. Hours of operation Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to 12 noon. They are closed on Sunday. Stop by Reynolds Farm Equipment. Inside Titus Bakery and Deli, you'll find them inside Reynolds. That's Titus Bakery and Deli. You can enjoy breakfast and or lunch. Titus Bakery and Deli. They're open Monday through Friday, 9, excuse me, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. On Saturday, they're open 7 a.m. to 12 noon. You can find Reynolds Farm Equipment right there at 1451 East 276th Street, Atlanta, Indiana. That's a rural address. That um, 276th Street, they just got done making an over and under. Uh, okay, well, that's a quicker way, I guess, to, to um, keep going north. If you're trying to get to South Bend. I think that's why they did it. Somebody told me that. From Indianapolis to South Bend, they were trying to put all these over and unders in so that a person driving could shave 45 minutes off the trip. <laughs> so uh, along US 31 in northern Hamilton County, that's where you'll find Reynolds Farm Equipment in Titus. Bakery and Kelly. Getting in the ball game, I bet you we're going to get one inning at least. Right here is number 30, Gus Sandberg. Gus Sandberg, uh, he's going to do the pitching right here. Right handed pitcher. We'll talk about Gus. We'll mention he's a sophomore. 
He's 5'10", 215, pretty stout young man. He's got a two-in-one record. He's got two wins, one loss. He's a pitcher and a third baseman. He got 10 and a third innings under his belt this season. Uh, this is game appearance number five. And he has started two games along the way. He's faced 49 batters, 158 pitches. He's allowed 10 hits. He's allowed seven runs. Two of those runs were earned. He has struck out nine. And he has set down four of the nine. Looking. He's hit two batters. Uh, he's got an ERA of 1.355. Got Sandberg. We'll start from the windup. Seven in the bat. Number two. The off batter, Ben Worth. Here comes the first pitch. High and away, ball one. Ben Worth brings a tremendous center field. Lead off batter for Coach Wood. He's just a sophomore. Here comes the pitch. High for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Ben Worth. Step back in and on deck is Colin Castens. Pair then look at singles over the glove. From the wide up, he kept a 2 0. High and outside, ball three. Not sure how much bullpen that Gus got before this live batter. Here at Singles, here comes a 3 0. High for ball four. So Ben Worth going to jog down the first base. There's one aboard. Stepping in the back. We're going to see number 19, Colin Castens. Colin Castens, 19 on the back. And we're going to see about 250, 348 on base percentage. Got five hits in six ball games. During that stretch, going to step off the back. Got Sandberg a little bit discombobulated there. Going to step back in. Got him a little bit singles. Out of stretch. Gus Sandberg checks first base out of the stretch as the set. First pitch to Castings high for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Seven back in. Colin Castings out of the set position. Here comes the pitch. Just above the zone, ball two. Trying to find that release point. Gus Sandberg. Here and look at the signals out of the stretch. Runner at first base is Ben Worth. Nobody out. Ground ball. Third base, Gavin Buttel goes to second base. They get the out at second. Don't get the, the 5 4 3 and the throw to first base. Gets by Lucas Kirky. It's going to be an error on the throw. So safe at second base is Ben Worth. Checking in the bat right now is the three hitter number seven, Jack Schaefer. Jack Schaefer, first baseman. Runner at second base, Ben Worth. Still his choice off the bat of Colin Castens. Gonna work it right there. How the set. Here comes a pitch. Breaking pitch finishes inside, ball one. I'll be misspeaking. We'll mention Colin Castens is at second base. Still his choice. Setting down has been work. Here comes the pitch. Ground ball. Base hit. Three third and shortstop. And that ball can be thrown in from left field. And runners out on the corners for the Red Devils. One out. Stepping into that. We're going to see the four-hander Lincoln Burry. We're 16 Lincoln Burry. Picture of record. He pulled, was pulled out and gave way to Maddox Bramer. And now Aiden Heap, a picture of record for the Red Devils. Out of the set, here comes a pitch from Sandberg. The pop one foul out of play. No balls, one strike. 16, Colin Furry, junior class member. Colin Furry batting 350. And that right handed batter's box, 435 on base percentage. Here comes a pitch from Sandberg, ground ball. Just inside the third baseline, it's fair, it's off the glove. Deep 
near the grass off the club of Gavin Littell couldn't clean it. Coming in to score is number 19, Calvin Castens. It's a 20 to 3 contest. Bottom of the sixth inning. Uh, at first and second base. Stepping into bat for West Lafayette, number nine, Joe Doty. Shortstop for the Red Devils. Get in, look at singles, how stretch. Now the set. Got Sandberg, here's the pitch. Low. Outside, ball one. Joe Doty. On the season, batting 375. He's played in all six games. 524 on base percentage. Here's the pitch. Ground ball foul of third base. They'll track that one down. I guess they're going to let somebody get it. So lights are on here at Red Devil Stadium. One ball, one strike. Gus Sandberg. Look at how the stretch there. He's stepping in again. From the stretch, peering in, looking at signals. I should say doing the catching for the Knights in the ball game is freshman number 24, Ben Weeks. Ben Weeks, he's 60 tall, 155, a catcher and a middle infielder. Ben Weeks catching for the Knights. Pitch comes in, strike cold. 1 2 kill. Number nine, Joe Doty, batting, right-handed batter for West Lafayette. Barry Lillian singles, now out of the stretch, now the set. Check second base, the third time, here's the pitch. The hold up right hand, check swinging, the ball low. 2-2 two -two count. Number nine, Joe Doty, shortstop for the Red Devils. Runners at first and second. Out of set, here's the pitch. Breaking pitch finishes outside, ball three. Three two kill. To the five hitter, number nine, Joe Doty. He'll step back in, right handed batter, facing the righty. Gus Sandberg. Here's the pitch. He'll take a shot to left field. It's going to be a base hit. And a one hop in the club in a load of bases. Bases are loaded. I think out in the left field might be 31, Jack Reisman. Yes, I believe so. He stayed in the ball game when he gets hit for Keith Brooks. He entered the game for Mr. Brooks. Uh, we might see Mr. Brooks tomorrow at Central Catholic. That's just a guess. I definitely don't make the lineups out. Uh, I just record them. Here comes the pitch. Could pop one up. Foul territory might be playable. Weeks gives it a look. He goes out of play. Got the bleachers. Weeks, Gus Sandberg, Gavin Butel right there. Should that ball been in play? So no balls, one strike. In the batter's box, number 10, the six hitter, Aiden Heap. Aiden Heap, he started out at third base. He is the pitcher of record for the Red Devils. Out of set, here comes the pitch. he pop one. Playable on the infield. Fly ball. Called for by the second baseman. And makes the catch right there for out number two. At second base is number 13, sophomore Calvin Reisman. Calvin Reisman, he's 6'1", 155. He's a pitcher and a infielder. He makes that catch. There are two out. Bottom of the sixth inning. Carry on looking at signals. That's Sandberg. Camden Proctor, the DH in the batter's box. He get a good stroke to right field. It's going to be right at Aiden, I should say Caden Minnick. And that's going to complete today's ball game. Six innings gone by. Final score, Knights 20, Red Devils 3. We do thank you for tuning in. We'll mention next game on the agenda for each of these teams will be tomorrow at Central Catholic High School. And that'll be a 5.30 start tomorrow, the 17th, on a Wednesday. We hope you'll tune in. We thank our guests. Uh, we thank Mr. Shane Fry. Quality gentlemen. I'll mention that for sure. So we're about out of here. We thank my wife back home from Soundcheck. We thank Robbie Tindall for her personal attention. 
to come in for us. We are thankful. We're about out of here. Thank you for listening. No matter if you're home or away, if you're doing the teaching and in the learning, don't let him go. Keep the fire burning.
cameras all chime in. It sends them the link every time the game comes up. So, oh, good. Yeah, they really appreciate that. Well, thanks for being real. I'm not going to think about it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it would be amazing. 